Okay, so I just thought I'd elaborate on how to calibrate the laser on this thing. So this is a PlayStation 1, and uh, this is a PlayStation 1 that wasn't playing back CDs properly. It was skipping on some of the later tracks, and it's, this is a common enough issue, and most people say replace the laser, but uh, that, uh, that's not what you do. In this case, the laser is fine, but it does need some recalibration. So the first thing we're going to do, five screws in the bottom of this, and the top lifts off like that. Now to break it down a little, this, uh, this brown board here is our power board. And the board on this side, covered over by the shield, is the motherboard. And the, the, the motherboard has a shield over it to stop interference getting, getting into it and ruining the signals that go within this. The switch mode power supply, you have to be kind of careful with this because back here is live AC voltage and, that's, and that gets converted as we move down here, that gets converted to lower voltages I think are about 5 volts and 12 volts and that comes out here. So you'll be fine if you touch this, it won't be so good if you touch any of the stuff back here. Best, best thing to do is not touch any of it. So what are the just uh, so the adjustments we're going to make are down here right by this connector for the CD laser okay so the okay so before we do any adjustments we want to clean this laser lens using a cotton bud and at least 90% strength isopropyl alcohol. It's the only thing that'll clean these kind of lasers completely and evaporate leaving no residue uh, because you want this to be absolutely clear whenever you're, well, whenever you're playing back anything. So the most common, most common adjustments people on gaming forums will tell you to make and even people, and all these adjustments are in regular CD players too so people on, you know, uh, audio forums will tell you to make this as well. They will tell you to adjust the laser power when it's not working. And that is this tiny potentiometer in here at the ribbon cable. Don't do that. Adjusting laser power is something that should only be used as a last resource. That's when the... That's when you have things like the laser, it, the laser lens is cloudy and it can't be cleaned and you don't have a spare one. Or, well, that's pretty much the only case I would ever adjust the laser power on this, or if it's completely kaput, but you can only, te you can only know that if you test it properly. So when, now the, pro the problem with adjusting the laser power and increasing it is, yes, it might get it working for a while, but the laser was not designed to run on that much power, that, 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 and that little diode will burn out. And you'll be, and you'll ruin your and you will ruin this laser mechanism. So what we do instead is we adjust it using the very small potentiometers down here. And what these are, these adjust the focus and tracking gain of this laser. Uh, where was I? So in order, so in order to adjust our whoops, so in order to adjust our focus and tracking gain, we're going to need to play. A, we're going to need to play a CD in this. Now, I'll just move the. So in order to adjust the focus and tracking gain in this, we're going to need to play a CD. Now you could put in a regular PlayStation One game, but you have a lot more control over what's going on with the CD. You have a lot more control over what's going on with the CD, and personally, I like to use, I like to use, and personally, whenever I'm doing this on uh, even regular CD players, I like to use big compilation albums. Now, the reason for this is that a CD, the laser art reads, the laser art reads from the center outwards, and the CD will hold seventy-four minutes of music. So, if we imagine here. Laser starts here, here's zero minutes, here's about 30 or 40 minutes, and there's 74 minutes. And you want the CD with loads of tracks and loads of music on it, so it reads right to the edge. 
and the edge of the CD is where you need your tracking and focus gain the most. That's why you find some, D some CD players, as they start to get on a bit, whenever they get towards the end of the album, that's when they start having skipping problems. A lot like this, a lot like this PlayStation does when you try to play back a CD on it. I mean, if you're playing a game as well, uh, you'll find that it'll have problems like the, the picture's bad and stuff like that. This is how you fix it. So we're going to stick my CD on here. And the other thing we want to do is, there is, let me just move this. This hole here has a small switch inside that lets the PlayStation know that the lid is, clo that the lid is closed. Obviously, I've taken off the lid entirely, so we're going to have to fool this into thinking there's a lid on there. And I like to put something just to weigh down that switch. That happens to fit perfectly. Now, I, uh, so I already have this plugged in at the wall, which is why I've not touched any of this. So what we want to do now is turn it on. If you remember, the power button is over this switch. This is the switch to turn it on. So we should get the CD spins up a little bit whenever it's booting and we give it a minute and it should stop, stop. That was timed brilliantly. So now we're in, now if we had, a, if I had a monitor hooked up to this, we'd be in the opening menu, but I don't. So we're going to use our imagination. Need our, need a PlayStation remote to control this. If I press the X button, that starts the CD playing. There we go. Now what we need to find is we need to find our, we need to find what's called the eye pattern. This is a pattern that can be displayed on an oscilloscope. And this is how you're able to, then this is how you're able to tell that this is how you're able to calibrate the focus and tracking gain of your CD player so that it plays perfectly. If I get a bit closer, you can just barely see it. Now the problem with this CD player is that the adjustments for the focus and tracking gain are underneath the CD. So ideally we'd like to adjust, we'd like to adjust these while the CD is playing, but we can't in this case, which is infuriating. So we have to stop the CD, adjust it and come back to it. So this is my oscilloscope probe and I'm looking for, I'm going to be looking for the test point that shows us the RF pattern. Now I, now I believe the test point on this is called CL704, but I just found it by probing around on different test points until I found it. So the first thing I want to do, which is what I've just done, is I've connected the ground of my oscilloscope probe to the ground on this PlayStation. And the ground on this PlayStation I've connected up to the shield because shield in electronics means ground. So if I go right in here, the CL704 being careful not to touch the CD, Hold that steady. Now come up to my oscilloscope. There's our eye pattern. There's our eye pattern. I'll just turn the intensity up a little bit so we can see it better. So with this eye pattern, now this is hardly perfect, but it's about the best I was able to do. You want to adjust your focus and tracking gain such that it minimizes this up and down jittering and you want to also make sure that these little, uh, these, uh, uh, these, and you also want to make sure that this image is as sharp as you can get it. You don't, if it's blurry or there's bits missing in this image, that means you need to adjust the focus and tracking gain. So when I was talking earlier about how uh, this is focus and tracking gain is most significant towards the edge of the CD. That's because no CD is perfect. They're they're mass produced things, so they're going to have slight imperfections on uh, tolerances and how they were made. So it means that, and 
if you look very closely at the edge of the CD, although I doubt it's coming across in this video, you can see the edge wobbles ever so slightly. That's because no CD is absolutely flat and no CD is ab has, this, has the whole absolutely centered. So the folks in Tracking Gain makes, makes the adjustments for this to make sure that your CD tracks perfectly. And we need to adjust the folks in Tracking Gain in order to make that happen. So if I were to take my PlayStation remote and press the right bumper a bunch of times, what this does is it moves the laser right to the edge of my CD. If you watch here, you should just be able to see it if I hit the track one more time. There we go. So now the, so now the laser is reading the track and the music right at the very edge of my CD. This is where your focus and tracking gain is most important because this is where you, this, you get the most wobble. Now if we look up here at my oscilloscope, you can see our eye pattern is just as good as it was when it was reading in the center. This is nice and sharp. The jittering is not ideal, but that's a lot better than what it was. So that's what we're aiming for. It needs to be good, not only in the middle of the CD, but also right to the edge. So how do we adjust this? Well, what I'm going to do is take my oscilloscope probe off. And then, down here, because the CD is in the way of our adjustments, on most CD players you can do this while it's running. Can't in this case, we have to switch this off. Green light goes off. CD stops. Take this off. Now if we're getting really close, these are the two potentiometers you want to be messing with. Uh, one is one is focused, but one is labeled bias, one is labeled gain. These are our tracking controls. And when you're adjusting them, you have to be very, they're very, very sensitive. So you have to be very, very slight with them, like a handful of degrees. Uh, otherwise you put the whole thing out of whack and you'll spend ages trying to get that eye pattern back at all. Don't ask me how I know that. So adjust these very, very slightly each time, then put your CD back on and check the eye pattern again. Now, unfortunately, this is the only real way to get your C get a PlayStation 1 or a CD player going again in this manner. You do need an oscilloscope, and even at that, you need an analog oscilloscope. Most digital oscilloscopes that are under a thousand pounds, they won't be able to they won't be able to resolve that eye pattern image very well. So you will need to get old equipment in order to make that work and of course you know that's in one way that's good because the old equipment is much cheaper but the the, the flip but the downside of that is it's old equipment it mightn't even work uh my one does work so i'm you know I'm, I'm a bit lucky in that regard but anyway that's sort of a rundown of what i do whenever i'm fixing a cd player I'm powering it up, looking at my eye pattern for any imperfections, and adjusting it until it's as good as I can get. So now this PlayStation 1, whoop, I've lost it. So now this PlayStation 1 is going to be able to play this CD all the way through without skipping or getting stuck or losing the tracks.